Awesome. Welcome everyone to the SVK Media Network. Uh, you know what? In the studio today, it's 120. Is that Fahrenheit, Brenda? Is that Fahrenheit? You call it that in the States? No idea. Uh, so you don't know? It's, I don't know. it's plus 40. Let's do that in the studio today. And I'm excited about I, I you know what? Maybe that's what they did today, is they had to make my studio feel like a patio in the middle of the summer. Okay. Maybe that's what it is. You did this, Brenda? Did you do this on me? I, I did that. I arranged that for you, and uh, I'm gonna have to send a paycheck to whoever soon. Yeah. So here we go. So there's me. I'm dying here. I'm like, <laughs> I had to take off my sweater. I'm in my shirt. I'm gonna be in my shorts soon. It's so hot in here. So Brenda, welcome back to the show. Thank we you. have PO in the house. What are, before we bring him in? What are we focusing on today? You know, we're talking about our upcoming golf and patio season, mostly patio. And yes, you got it. Your favorite. Is this, it's, just, it's just, you just, we just walk around drinking this now. We don't fix it. We just drink this. Put a straw in it. No, <laughs> they're fairly you margarita. Could, you could though. You could. You could. You might be you a little could. buzzing a little bit, but it is a great product. First of all, I just want to do a shout out on it because it is my favorite margarita mix. You see the okay. ingredient deck on that? It's pretty freaking clean. Did you say freaking? Freaking. <laughs> freaking clean. That's what that's what I was so it's filtered water, which is important. Cane sugar, lemon, and lime juice. So that's it. it and that's it. That's it. So other products out there probably has a list like this, which I have seen. Yes. That, that has some pretty weird science project. Great night science project <laughs> stuff in it, eh? I always say if you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't be eating it or or drinking it. So there's a lot of things out there on a lot of labels where you can't pronounce them. Do you know what? I've been drinking this all morning this morning in another drink because I made my margarita um, <laughs> today this morning. It's so yeah. hot in here, though, by the way. And uh, um, it's 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 addictive, just so you know. Just so you know. Why is yeah. that? Why am I addicted to this? Um, because it comes from the most amazing beverage company in Canada and no. <laughs> <laughs> so there, so there, no plug at all. No plug at all. Yeah. <laughs> no plug at all. Now tell me about Fairly because it says Fairly on here and I, what is Fairly? Who, who are you? What are you? What is this? Fairly is our food service brand in Canada. So it's exclusively <gasps> a food service product. You can't get this stuff at the grocery store. You it's sure? just for every single person we love in our <laughs> hospitality industry to uh, bring behind the bar and be as creative as they want with it, which is PO specialty is to take it as an ingredient and uh, just create something new with it every time. And it's one of my favorite products for the versatility of it. Well, it is. You know what? I, I'll tell I'll share with you. I like a little Red Bull once in a while and this mixed. Ooh. Second of all, I like it with a, 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 a pop. <laughs> I'm going to say pop. <laughs> Do you like that? Yeah. Pop. A pop. Um, I have to ask you, it says not from concentrate. Why is that important? Uh, be because it's not a concentrated product. It's not from concentrated lemon juice, not from concentrated uh, lime juice. Can you, so can you tell us what juice. concentrated means? Because we see it all the time. This means condensed, right? Like you take you take the water out of, a, out of a juice product. Every juice product has water in it. The fruit itself has the natural water in it. And it's extracted out and to make a paste. It's no different like a tomato paste. You know, you take a yeah. tomato and you condense it, take the water, extract the water out, and make the oh. paste out of it, and you reconstitute it. It doesn't there mean it's not juice, right? So, like, 100% juice from concentrate is still 100% juice. It has just been modified from its first press form into a condensed form and then concentrated or reconstituted back. So you haven't reconstituted this product then. This is pure, 100%. Pure, 100%. Wow. It's pretty good, eh? No, it's Nothing but the best for you, I Jay. challenge Nothing anyone that's going to watch. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna challenge anyone that watches our show or anything. Just go out, buy, get, go to your restaurant. If you don't have any, you can't get this retail, sorry. Yeah. And just tell them to buy you one and just drink it all day. It's so good. It I would use this in my club. If I was running my club again. Which apparently I, I can't because you, you guys probably shouldn't. a few minutes ago. <laughs> so, anyways, let's bring in the star of the show, P.O. There, P.O. Hey, there what's he up? is. How are you? 
You know what? I'm great, but I'm going to tell you something. Don't take this as, as a knock or anything, because I think yeah. it's. I, I like him. I think he's cool. You got like this 1990s Polly Shore look. <laughs> oh, doesn't yeah, he? It's true. With you totally do. Hair. Without your yeah, you totally yeah. do. I think yeah. it. I think it's, it's a, man. A compliment. I, I love him. Yeah, yeah, like, thank you. He's a good guy. He's a cool guy. Sino yeah, man. I, we don't see it so much though. <laughs> <laughs> We don't Brenda, you so agree, much. Brenda? Brenda, did you, see that? did you see that? I would have never come up with that on my own, but as soon as you cut the peel and said Polly Shore, I was like, oh. We That's have true. a famous, we have a, a super, super, well, you're famous already, Pio. What do you He's do? Where, where, where are you from? Where are you from? Where, where do you, what do you do there? I'm from uh, Quebec. I make cocktails. I produce events and I show young people how to make cocktails as well. This is my day-to-day -day life, day-to-day uh, -day job. And I love it. And I show like you guys too how to make uh, great uh, cocktails, mocktails today. You said it was hot in your uh, studio. So oh, it's I'll so hot in here. It's crazy. Refreshing cocktails for that type of environment. Yeah, that's, that's not going to help. That's not going to help. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. Well, it's not going to help, try. buddy. No, no. So so I got to ask you before we get into your amazing drinks, because I just, I just noticed those mason jar jars to the right. Is that going to be involved later? Yes, it's going to be involved. Was that uh, till your yeah. left? Yeah, this is yeah uh, this those is fruits that were uh, Brenda, going look rotten, at that. and I decided to make something with it before it goes rotten. Make some. I think uh, that's half chef. I think you're half chef. He is half chef. Uh, yeah, I love it. Chef. Yeah, we and I talk a lot with Brenda actually. At different techniques. She inspired me every time we plan for this uh, for this video for this uh, podcast. We have a uh, conversation together and discussing the recipes, the thing we will be uh, showing you. And it's, uh, it's really fun. There's so many things you can do. It's creative. It's different techniques from the kitchen and from the bar. You take and you get inspired. You get creative. Yeah, I love it. It's a lot of fun. And it's, uh, it's tasty too. So just positive. So, Pio, I got to ask you a question. As I, it is like, I'm not kidding you. It's hot in here. <laughs> is, I'm just like, I can hardly breathe. Um, what's it mean to you to have a product that's not concentrated like the margarita mixer from Fairly? What's it mean? Like you, it's got to be big to you, right? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's really important because the taste is different. The different the difference in ingredients too is different when you want to make cocktails. At the end of the day, what we want is having a product that is uh, yeah, that share our values as a bartender, as a chef, as mm. a creator. We want a, pro a brand that share the values of our establishment or our personal values, and uh, this is what what it does with uh, with these products. And what we want is when we use a product that is from concentrate or not from concentrate at the end of the day is in the cocktails we don't want this to taste and this is what we like with fresh products like this is that it, it tastes really when you do a margarita for example where it's mostly citrus and tequila uh you want th there's a lot of citrus in it. it's not just like a couple of drops it's uh, almost a third of the cocktail so it needs to be good ingredients, fresh ingredients, ingredients that have a good taste, because this is what you're going to put in your mouth, a third of the cocktail, even more. So you want really something that is a, that has a good taste and is fresh and come from the real fruit. So when you go with flavoring juice, with citric acid, with a lot of sugar, um, like you try to balance this out, there's always a little bit of acidity added. There's always, so you can you can't go around it. Sometimes you, we have also with Fairly the actual lime juice, which is uh, not from concentrate. Also, it's just lime. And this, the lemon juice, is just lemon. So that's really, really useful to make cocktails. In the margari margarita mix, it's a bit different. This one has sugar in it. And uh, so we just use the product that is already mixed with sugar and the lemon juice and the fact that and the lime juice and the fact that we mix lime and lemon and sugar everything is already there and the lime and the lemon are not from concentrate so it's a quality product we can use for margarita but also for a lot of different cocktails and mocktails and this is why i'm going to show you today we're not going to be making any margarita today we're going to use this to do margarita this is an easy an easy uh, fix you use this product, but I'm going to show you how to make uh, non-alcoholic lemonade. And I'm going to show you how to make also different tasty iced tea, uh, different uh, flavored iced tea with this one, uh, with the margarita mix. And at the end, a sparkling lemonade, which is a bit similar from the spritz, a non-alcoholic spritz that you guys can serve on the, on the patio when it's going to be time for being outside with the sun, shades, it's going to be hot. We want to have these mocktails to be available. So that's what I'm going to show you. And really, the fresh ingredients from Fairly is, uh, is what we want. So, 
Yeah. There you go, Brenda. There you go. There you go. Well, I have to say, Theo, I love I love the comment about um, the products matching the values. Like I really yeah, actually, yeah. I, I took that in. That's the first time I've heard somebody say that, and I really just took that in. Like you're absolutely right. The quality of the products match the values of the person who's serving the product. Super important. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's the thing about these. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that's like a chef. Yeah. Same thing, right? And we're we'll yeah, get you a chef um, back in soon. There's a way of sustainability also by using these products compared to using fresh lemon and fresh lime that are like just directly the fruit. Uh, when we use these products, just the, ju the juice has been imported. So we don't, we don't, we don't import the entire fruit from uh, Mexico or from uh, South America. We import just the juice and we're using just the juice. So I don't know if you realize, but what you do for all the quantity of lime and lemon you will be imported to just press and take I the smell entire carbon reduction. It. It's crazy. Yeah. Right, Brenda? You got it. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I get the math. I get the math. Well, <laughs> Paul, we're going to break for a quick 30 second commercial. It's actually 34 seconds. Then we're going to come back and then you can rock the world in your drinks, okay? Awesome. As I, as I sit in this sauna. <laughs> and feels kind of start one. <laughs> yeah, thanks, buddy. Thanks. I'm going to be in short soon. So, let's, I mean, never mind. Anyways, we're going to go to this. Be right back. Been through a whole lot, but we overcome. Enemies in our face, but we ain't going to run. Never drift off course. All we stay on mission won't slow us down because we way too driven. Yet we put in these 10,000 hours. You won't stop us because we got the power. Whole world is watching, and I hope they ready. From here on out, we a legendary. We All right, we're back. So, Brenda, I got to bring this up because before we get in here, this is your website. And I, I've been kind of sharing people's websites lately. You guys got a kick butt website, just so you know. Thank you. Thanks. It does. Well, now, these re are these any PO's recipes on here? Yet? Um, I think some of his are being integrated. We really stepped up our marketing department. Shout out to uh, Priscilla um, and, the, and the rest of our marketing team um, have really stepped up our digital platforms this year like we launched our fairly instagram page and um and what yeah, we're doing working with, with po to incorporate some of the men uh some of the recipes that he's created into both platforms but it's a work in progress and it's uh it's been a great journey so far you guys are killing it over here so big shout out on your website i love tips and tricks i can i can i can i, can I give you some tips and tricks later on to put in here? <laughs> sure no no <laughs> Awesome. Anyways, sure. <laughs> let's 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 go back to PO here. Okay, here you go, PO. Over to you. All right, good. So we'll start with uh, the very simple drinks. Today it will be a lot in simplicity. Uh, it's uh, using the margarita margarita mix in most of our uh, creations. So the first one is uh, lemonade. Okay, a lemonade that will be a bit twisted because we want to do something differently. We're going to use also this uh, new product, which is a berry a berry puree with sugar in it. Uh, it's made. You can use that for different type of recipes. You can use that for smoothie. You can use that for a lot of cocktails. But today we will use this one for uh, lemonade, okay? So using the margarita mix, the berry uh, smoothie mix, and also the strawberry mix for another one. So I'll make three different twists on the lemonade so we'll be able to see what it looks like and how simple it is. And you guys in the restaurant, you can use this mix, make these lemonades for your clients. So we go with three shakers. I'm going to make it in the shakers because I'm a bartender and I like working with these tools. Uh, however, you can do it in a big mason jar if you want to make big quantity for the, before the service. You can make it in a big pot. Anything you want, depending on the quantity you need to prep for. Me, I'm just going to make three different cocktails. So we'll start with this one here, margarita mix. And I'll go with simple one ounce in each of these one ounce for one glass of this twisted lemonade there you go and then i'll go with my fruit puree the mix i will make one with the berry here i'm gonna give this nice purple pink color and i go with one ounce as well and i'm gonna make another one with the mango puree 
Yeah. So another product with Philly. So we will have a lemonade with the taste of mango. And the last one, the strawberry. Okay, so we have three different. And then there's a lot of sugar and acidity in the mix I have made. So I will balance it out with water. So we need to have water to it in the proportion of approximately now, Pio, one by one. Yeah. Pio, I got a question. I'm always scared to play with water. Do you have any rules when you add water to drinks like this? I'm always worried of dil diluting it too much, adding too much in there. Do you put sparkling? Do you use bottled water? What should you... You got any you tips on the waters, friend? Yes, definitely. Usually, you're going to use the ice, okay, to dilute the oh. ice to oh. have water in the cocktail. The one that are different is, uh, for example, lemonade, the one we are making today, because yeah. we're not adding any spirits. The spirits will balance out the acidity and the sugar content by adding this liquid that is balanced. So it's not acid, it's not sweet. When you use, for example, a gin or a vodka or a whiskey, it's not acid, neither sweet. It can be a little bit, but not that much. Okay, so it will just balance it out this way by adding the spirits. In the lemonade, the difference is that we are not adding any spirits. So we need to add water. If not, it's going to be too sweet, a lot too sweet, a lot too acidic. So we use water to balance it out with actual water and plus with ice. In cocktails, there's always dilution. If I can give you an advice for next time you make cocktails or you want to play with it, just try it. Do do different tests and try it and find the, ice, the good ice balance. Ice is the key, eh? Yeah, ice this is, is the key, key, really. That's the icy key. Got that, Brenda? I got ice. It. Ice. Just check. Just check. Ice is <laughs> now, the key. Now, if I pass out, Brenda, because it's so hot in here, can you just continue? <laughs> I got you. Okay. I'll cover you. Yeah, I don't so even have all the lights on. Jeez. Sorry. Sorry, Pio. It's about me right now. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. If you make a, I'll be a quiet. martini, for example, or old fashioned, these are cocktails that are made with a lot of um, spirits. This we call them spirits forward cocktail. Martini, old fashioned, Sazerac, Manhattan. This type of cocktail needs a lot of dilution. So you need to play with ice and make sure you stir it a long time. Leave it on ice. Take your time. You're not in a rush to take the ice out of the cocktail. And this is for cocktails that has a lot of alcohol because adding water to a spirit for cocktail will just open the flavor. And this is the difference though with tiki cocktail or long drink with a lot of juices, you really need to take your time and be careful of the quantity of water you add because you don't want this to become flat and to add no more taste. Same thing, mm -hmm. a lot of people, what they do is at the end, they just, oh, my glass is not full. I pour a lot of sparkling water on it, so I fill mm -hmm. up my glass. Don't do that. This is exactly what you're going to do mm -hmm. if you want to ruin your cocktail and you want it to not taste anymore. So you're just going to put a little bit of sparkling water, like in the mojito, for example, two, yeah. three, two and a half ounces of sparkling water maximum. You don't fit up your glass like blah, 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 blah. This is going to ruin your mojito. There you go, Brenda. There you go. Here, there you go. Lemonade. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I just I, I'm always worried about that because I, I, I mess around with the water too much. But ice, I like that. That's a good tip. There you go. Some cocktails you will have water like lemonade. I had two ounces of water, so it's two for two. One lemon, one margarita mix, I mean, one of the fruit puree, which contains fruits and sugar in it and two parts of water, okay? Then I will add my ice. So that's the third part of water. Put a lot of ice in it. And then I'm gonna shake it. As I said, I'm using these tools because this is what I have and we go one glass at the other, but one glass after the other. But on your side, you can use huge mason jar, but anything that is, um, that is sealed properly, you can use it to shake your first ingredients of your lemonade. So. So, so Brenda, yes. I don't know if you know. I did a little poll. I did a little poll for you. Oh, right. I did a little poll for you, NPO. I'm excited. Yeah, see, I I do this stuff for you guys. Right? I work. I work out. I work for you guys, <laughs> nonstop here. So I asked. I asked my followers. There you go, Brenda. That's how you do it. That's Anyways, my favorite I, part of Pio's whole thing. Right is, this, is, is Polly Shore's dance there? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Brenda, I got to say this. So, 
Okay. I asked my followers yesterday, um, what is what is what uh, what which is your favorite patio drink? So I asked, is the margarita, mojito, apero spritz, Moscow mule, and out of seventeen votes, which it still it still, it still has a couple days to grow. Yeah. Right now, margarita is still number one. Perfect. Forty-seven percent of the people voting for margarita still. Perfect. I mojitos like number it. two. Do you like that? I love mojitos. Well, I know, but like it, we're we're talking like the margarita stuff for today, and it's awesome. We are talking number, margaritas, right? yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so I, I didn't put I did put like an old person's drink on there, I think. But <laughs> Moscow Mule is not doing well, by the way. Oh, Seen a bit of a decline. Surprise. It's not even rating. No one likes them. What's up with that, PO? Is that do you think that's because it's done to death over the last 10 years or 20 years? I'm surprised actually because we are showing it to uh, our students so uh, here at the bartending school, the mule, different mule, London mule, yeah. Moscow mule, and they love it. And they said that it, they order <gasps> it a lot in bar. So I'm surprised. I thought it was still on the rise, but uh, is it called a Moscow mule? Yes. Yeah, like the city. Yeah. Okay, maybe Moscow. that's maybe that's it. I don't know. That's why. Yeah, oh, no. No, I just right? Like maybe we have to call it the Brenda. No, never no. Mind. <laughs> never mind. Just pick a never different mind. city. <laughs> Put a Montreal mule or was, Manitoba mule or or a ginger mule. It's the ginger mule. I was gonna say. Sorry, Brenda. We have a, we make it with um, tequila, and it's called a Mexican mule. And it's delicious, and we make it too with, uh, with gin, a London mule. So we I will ask that. Uh, I will. I will bring. I will do another poll this weekend and ask people if we change it that to. What did you call it? Mexican mule. Yeah, with tequila, Mexican mule. I love that. With Beautiful. Uh, gin, London mule, and you have the dark and stormy. It's not the mule, but it's exactly the same recipes with rum. So there's a lot of rum with ginger and uh, and lime juice that are delicious. So you just need to make the spirit that you want and find a name for it that is not Moscow. And don't use Brenda. Don't use Brenda. <laughs> don't use Brenda. <laughs> Sorry, Brenda. Combination with the word mule, at least. <laughs> I know. I, I, didn't, I didn't see that part until later. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blame your delirium on that. <laughs> exactly. I'm starting to see elves on my table. Look at <laughs> that, P.O. Oh, my oh, my God. There you go. So you have it all. Uh, these are the three lemonade that I made using simply one part of the margarita mix, one part of the fruit puree uh, that contains fruits and sugar, and I'll have also two parts of water. Simple as that. Shake it, pour it on the new ice, and the little decoration, whatever you want. You can put the dry strawberry, a dehydrated strawberry. You can put, uh, I put the air cranberries. Looks good. Fits well with with uh, with the with the bay that we find the berries that we find in this mix, and uh, mango. Okay. Just a straw, paper straw. No more plastic straw. This is how we use these paper straw. And this one lemon with the strawberry, dehydrated uh, uh, lemon, and a nice glassware too. Change everything if you have nice glassware. So for us here, we take good care of using beautiful glassware. These are antiques, and um, I think it changed everything. So there you go for the first part. I have, a, I have a question for you, Peel. Yeah. What do you think? Like when I go to uh, restaurants and bars, I see a lot of places that are offering like gin flights or whiskey flights or whatever. What do you think of converting what you've just done right now into a lemonade flight? So to, to capitalize on that whole trend of increased non-alcoholic beverages, but give that creativity. And um, I mean, I don't want to say encourage the kids to start ordering flights, but it is something fun and different. So that instead of ordering four big lemonades, you get, or four of the featured lemonade flavors, you get four little samples of lemonade. So like, I'm thinking, you know, like a mint lemonade or the strawberry or mango lemonade and, and just do little samplers and have it just be that wow factor on the, uh, on the delivery at the table. 
Yeah, I love it. I think it's a very good idea. What is nice mm -hmm. with these type of lemonades is that is they are easy to make. This mm -hmm. it takes just two ingredients because everything is already mixed in the margarita mix. You just need to add something to twist the lemonade and make it a bit different from the basic. If you want to make a basic, you just go with this and water. Shake it on ice. That's it. Sure. You have the basic lemonade. Now, if you add the berry puree the be or the mango or the strawberry, you have a twist. You said about mint. This is so easy to make. It takes two seconds. You can make a big batch, shake it on ice, then strain it and pour it in the fridge. And when you're ready, you pour it on the new ice. That's it. So you can have this big mason jar already made. You make two of these. You make one of these. And yes. then you put uh, two cups of water approximately and you shake it on ice, strain it on a big container in the fridge and you're ready for your service. You just pour it a little by little in on ice on fancy glassware and this is what the customer received. So really it's different from the pop, from a juice. It has a lot of added value and it's simple to make big quantity and cheap too. Perfect. Yeah, there was actually a place, I forget what it is, but they were offering kind of like that iced tea or le sorry, lemonade or iced tea, I think it was lemonade, mm -hmm. um, as that replacement instead of water even. Yeah. Like how, like, cause like, uh, it's gotta be maybe a penny or two more than water. It's not very and that's, expensive. No. Yeah. And then it's adding such more value there. Hey, I like hundred percent. Yeah. And it's yes. that well yes. factor, that visual factor, right? So you're, you're not just putting a glass of water. It's that whole H2 no concept. So you're not just putting a glass of water in front of somebody. You're putting in a colorful cocktail, mocktail in front of somebody. And then, well, you know, four tables right. around. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We're really looking at customer experience and increasing customer experience. So maybe instead of offering that on the table instead of water or whatever it is or what it, you know, whatever. You got me thinking here, Brenda, because imagine if you're at a, a restaurant, a patio, yeah. and they bring a pitcher of water. Like instead of putting the pitcher of water on the table, they're putting a pitcher of lemonade. And, and it's just like it's, you know, it's not alcohol and stuff unless unless you're you know, ripping her up and then you get the <laughs> liquor one. But do you imagine how nice that would look, though, in just the Absolutely. sense of increasing that? Um, I think we created something today, guys. Is I think yeah. we could do that. Like it's a few more pennies, and the value would be like, wow, I want to go back. They give out free lemonade with That's each free. meal or whatever it is. Even the concept of like a the mousse bouche, right, or a palate cleanser, like just something small. It doesn't need to be a full I, glass. I, I bet you, and I don't know scientific here. Maybe PO will. Is that you probably eat more when you drink? lemonade than water i don't know i bet that. you you do i bet you you do because it's like drinking pop has that like fuzzies and stuff like it you eat more when you drink pop by the way is that i bet you you do the same with lemonade it just increases the you know gets the things going and all these other things i bet you do I think there might be some science behind that. And I think you I think we need to call this. You're, you're, you're putting that citrus on your tongue, right? It's cleansing your tongue every single time. And then, then you eat something and it's receiving more of the flavors. Right. And so I think, I think we have to call upstairs for that one, Brenda. I think, I think we have, we to, have to, to, I think we have to call upstairs for that one, get a vote on that. Yeah. I think we can. I think that's a great way of increasing bill sizes. Absolutely. <laughs> plus okay. you, plus you feel like you're giving more. So people always want right. to give back when you give more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. from a sales plug, not to do a huge sales plug here, but, oh, here you go. but PO was talking about the fact that it's not very expensive and this product truly oh. is not very expensive. You're Great. only using a couple of ounces to make that, that, uh, well, that's important. Right. Brenda. Yeah, no, it's, that's important. That's huge. It's really important. So, so if you've got a cocktail that costs you like maybe 50, 60 cents to make a mocktail that costs you 50, 60 cents to make, and then you can turn around and sell it for, five bucks six bucks like that's insane well i'm gonna tell you something and this is what just hit me it's the heat in here is that i did read that a lot of qsrs are moving to lemonade right now like as a feature mm -hmm. on the menu so they obviously know something mm -hmm. right yeah so there so there <laughs> so there you go and you can go there from go. a scoop of the day to a lemonade of the day the scoop of the day the lemonade of the day instead of the soup of the day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Well, All right. P.O. P.O., do you need more time or do you want us to keep just talking about random stuff? 
It's okay. I'll let you talk about the lemonade. That's very interesting. What I know. I, One thing for sure is that this this nice drink is it can be sold. That's for sure. Like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. on the table with the garnish with the gla nice glass. Where uh, yes, you, you can think about giving it to some VIPs maybe, but I'm pretty sure you can sell this uh, easily five six dollars with uh, with that nice. It's a nice cocktail. It's a nice mocktail. It has a lot of flavor and it's delicious for kids or for for grown ups. So. Yeah, Sorry. really interesting uh, way to uh, add add sales to your table. For sure, especially so, when the third ingredient is water. Yeah, <laughs> Can you exactly. get anything less expensive than that? It's water. <laughs> awesome. So, Pio, what's up next? So, do you want me to cut to a commercial? Are you gonna do one a minute? Want to? I got. I got. I got. Take a minute. All right, let's go. I got a a fairly. I think this is a fairly <laughs> commercial. You like that, Brenda? Huh? Yeah. Like that. There you go. We're going to break. We'll be right back. Okay. That rocks. But the Poly Shore <laughs> on the show today. <laughs> Polly, you back? I'm back. Did you, right work with Brendan? you worked with Brendan Fr Fraser? What's that? <laughs> Did you work with Brendan Fraser? Brendan Fraser, no. I don't think he did. I think that was Encino Man. That was a good show. Was a good movie. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that was very good. Really it, it was, that was a good was, movie, man. Like, you know what? Polly Shaw was one, one of my favorite actors. I know, me I too, man. Encino Man. And that Cino was man? one day. He lives in the farm. And, biodome uh, biodome uh, yeah, biodome what was really the one that he drove the combine do you remember is that what you're talking about po po oh po sorry I the heat remember. I'm, He's, he was like he went to a farm it was like he went to a farm and he may read that girl yeah. yeah that was a good yeah. one that was a good one too buddy <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'll, I'll go. I go get my hair done tomorrow. Thanks, man. <laughs> no problem. Hey, man, we love them. Right? All right. What are you? What are you gonna rock next? Let's go. Iced tea. So this one is it's very simple. Again, it's a homemade iced tea or restaurant-made iced tea uh, with the margarita margarita mix. Again, because in an iced tea, you need sugar, you need lemon. Uh, so you have lemon, lime, sugar, and this one already mixed. And I made a strong black tea. So I have here the strong black tea. I put, I, the reason why I make it very strong is because I put an ounce and a half only in the in each of the cocktails. So it's not a lot of tea. It's just a little bit, but the tea is really strong because you want it to taste. Okay. So that's how um, I mix it. So first of all, this one, I'm going to make it all in the same shaker. And I start with a four ounce of strong black tea. So I put this, I can make it in advance, the black tea, infuse it for like 30 minutes in hot water. You let it sit. I you put, put it in the, the fridge? You, you can, yeah, you can put it in the fridge after service. During service, you okay. can put it in yeah. a mason jar, have it accessible. It's okay for, for the time of the service. Then you put it in the fridge and it's good for a couple of days. No problem. And the taste becomes stronger if you leave the infusion there. When it's ready, it's well balanced. You can take it off. But I like it to be strong because we're mixing it with uh, lemon, with sugar, again, with some water. So all of this together, will uh, you want the tea flavor to stay there. This is the one, it's, it's, since it's, it's an iced tea, this is the flavor you really want to stay there. So you need the tea to be strong. And I just put an ounce, an ounce and a half per cocktail, per, uh, per, per iced tea, okay, per mocktail. So the margarita mix, I'm gonna go with, in, th this is to make three glasses with my uh, fancy small glasses here. This is the mix, but we'll have the detailed recipes for one later. So this one I will put, two and a half ounce of the margarita mix. There you go. And then because of the tea, I will add a little bit of simple syrup, just three quarter of an ounce of sugar that I will add to this one. Even if the sugar is already in the margarita mix, I found I have I had to balance it out with a little bit more sugar. Iced tea is sweet. We love it this way. 
So the margarita mix is well balanced, but it's a bit more on the acidic side. So that's why I added a little bit of the fairly simple syrup. Already made, sh shelf stable, and I use this a lot for balancing my cocktails when it lacks a bit of sweetness. So there you go. I have my mix. Tea, margarita mix, simple syrup. Simple as that. Okay, this is my that's iced it. tea. That's it. And then I put ice. And again, I give it a nice shake. And again, you could do it in a mason jar in any container that is um, that is well closed. So I shake this, and with the tea uh, and the um, the tea as this emulsification with all the ingredients, we have a nice foam here. So it's going to look beautiful. And you see, again, I use fancy glassware that remind us the tea. Uh, so this is, I think it's nice to be a bit uh, fancy now. I think you learned that from me. I like to use nice glassware. I have a lot and it changed everything. And then I would just pour this on the new ice again to make my high tea. Okay. What are the twist that I'm going to make? I'm not going to make it that simple for you is using some bitters. Okay, so bitters is an ingredient that most of the bar have now. 10 years ago, no one knows what it was. There was two brands. Now there is like hundreds of brands and all the bar has some. The first one that was on the market and we didn't know what it was, was Angostura. So this is one of the bitter we can use, but there is so many. There is Few Brothers Angostura, there is some craft brands, and these are really changing the flavor of any cocktail mocktail you want to use. So me, I'm going to put just a little bit of Angostura in one of this iced tea. I'm going to put some cherry bitter in the second one. There you go. And I'm going to put one craft bitter. It's called Bitter Sling. It's from Vancouver. So this one has kaffir, kaffir lime, lime and other herbs. Very strong. So I'll put a little bit this way. And then with my bar spoon, yeah. with a spoon, I'm just going to give a gentle stir and trust me in this ingredients in this in this mocktail i had strong tea a little bit of margarita margarita mix and simple syrup that's it and then a little bit of bitter to give it a twist and look at that this is the iced tea i have it's beautiful it's tasty and too bad you cannot taste it on your side because <laughs> It's really, really different from what you used to. And then you can put a little garnish. The one that I put is inspired by the bitter I put in it, okay? So a little star anise with the angostura and a little di deshydrated lemon for the Gaston bitter from Vancouver. And the other one, we can just leave it this way. No need to have a garnish. So now you have it all this way. So that's the twisted iced tea, simple to make and uh, very delicious and another idea for a flight of mocktails yeah definitely right. yeah you can make just like a bunch of iced tea and see the difference by using different bitters different I like the it. bitters are really the salt and pepper for bartenders we use this a lot and i think it's, it's interesting when you want to make simple things to twist them with these uh flavoring agent that are there's so many like there is crafted like i have this one from quebec it's called amer quebec there's a beautiful packaging. It's super strong. And when you put it in different cocktails, it's going to change everything. So that's really, that these are ingredients that are interesting to use. Yeah. And you could even dial it up and change it up even with the tea part, I'm assuming, right? Like, so you don't even necessarily have to use a black tea per se. Perhaps you're using a green tea. I don't know. Is that is that doable, do you think? Of course. Yeah. I recognize the creative uh, Brenda here <laughs> with all your ideas. You're like, pew, pew, pew. You can do uh, whatever you want. I love it. Like you can do with mint tea. You can start with uh, chamomile. You can whatever you want and make sure with this idea, you go further. If you have the idea of making uh, with like different mint tea, what would be the ingredients that would complement your mint tea when you go with your bitter, when you go with your sweetener, how you will complement it. So this is what is super fun with uh, creating cocktails or mocktails. Awesome. Hey, yo, Brenda. It's so hot in here. I'm fading. So I'm trying. <laughs> hydrate, Jay. You need to hydrate. Bring I am. I already drank, drank three liters of water. It's so hot. It was crazy. So bad. Anyways. 
right. I love those ideas, by the way. They're so cute. The, like, yeah. They're just pretty glasses. You're absolutely right, P.O. The glassware makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is really good. This is my favorite. Like, I would drink that all day. This is I'm really thirsty. good. Yeah, for the wow. summer, like you can have this uh, if you don't want to. Oh, no, don't, no, no, no! It's too hard here for you to watch you drink cold beverages. It's hot. Anyways, uh, Pio, is there any other products you want to talk about, or do you have another one drink, or is this it? I just want to make sure. I'm, uh, I have I'm a last little. One, yeah. Do you, Do you want to go for that, or do you want me to run another commercial here? I know I can show it to you right away. It doesn't take long. No, 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 no rush. There's no rush. I could I could do this 24 hours with you, so don't worry. Let's just <laughs> okay. Let's do a awesome. culinary so, federation quick break for them, and then we'll come back. Perfect. Okay, and so. then do you want to quiz Brenda? Let's do some quizzing with Brenda. No. Yes, it's so fun. It's so fun. 80s trivia. We'll be right back. Uh, the culinary federation is so much more than a professional association. It's friendship, it's fun, and it's family. Come find where you fit in. Join the Culinary Federation family today. There you go. We're back. SVK Media Network. Fairly. little St. Patty. It's St. Patty's Day, too. It is St. Patty's Day. It is. I forgot about that. Okay, Brenda, what is, here's your 80s trivia question. Uh Uh-oh. Name a beverage, a pop beverage. Shoot me for that. Maybe we'll just skip that question. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Just trivia. (laughs) Uh, Okay, here we go. What drink was made from a clear liquid that looks like lemonade but tastes like a Coke? What was that? Invented in the eighties. Big in the eighties. Big in the eighties. Not big in Canada, but big in the eighties. Oh well, mm, I don't know. I don't know if it was, I don't know. Pio, do you know? Pio, can you repeat the question, please? Oh boy, <laughs> I'm gonna try to say it. The, the, okay, what drink was made from a clear liquid that looks like lemonade but tastes like Coke? 80s. Looks 1980s. Like you saw it on every 80s. Sh- sh- like when they pulled out a drink, usually in the 80s, on one of those sitcoms, they always had this drink in their hand. And then tastes we can like never. Lemonade and look like Coke? Yeah. But tastes like Coke. No, looks like lemonade but tastes like Coke. Tastes like Coke, looks like lemonade. Yeah. Clear liquid, yeah. 1980s. It's clear. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's not a cocktail. Is it a cocktail? No, it's a drink. I'm asking my drink, yeah. It's a drink, yeah. The, the popularity continued in the United States for the rest of the 80s, but faded out in Australia and the UK. <laughs> Two places I've never been. <laughs> it was Harlan, actually, Harlan, yeah. it, it contained sweeteners instead of sugar, and it was doubted. A diet drink at one time. I have no idea. No, no, no. Tab. 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 Tab cola what? was clear? Yeah. Do you know what is so funny? Like, I swear <laughs> to God, as soon as you started to say, I'm going to ask you, oh, wait, that's about a soda or something like that. I'm like, he's going to ask me something about tab. But <laughs> <laughs> no way. I am not, I no word of a lie, but I don't recall ever drinking one. So I couldn't tell you what the color no, was. No, I don't think I ever had one either. I no. don't think I ever had one either. And, right? and if it had aspartame or something like that in it, I probably wouldn't have drank it anyway. <laughs> yeah, probably not either. But here's one for PO. Here's one. What drink look sounds similar to the drinks you made today? That was a fruit drink that was popular in the U.S. and was invented in the 1980s. Best known for its citrus flavor, which is another reason why there was so it was so popular with kids and teens. This drink is also a good source of some nutrients, which made it really great for children who may have not got enough from other products. So it was a product that was made in the 80s. 
and I'm going to give you half of the name of it. Hi, the last, yeah. it was it was something Sun. Oh, Capri Sun? No. Boom, 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 Brenda, you got it. I don't know. I didn't know that. Brenda, you got it. Thank you, Brenda. And the little punch packs. <laughs> I'm, in there, I'm, in my, I'm in my shirt. It's so hot. It's so hot in here. I'm surprised it's... it took you that long. Pio, what you got going? Sorry, sorry. Back to back to Pio. Enough of my trivia. Brenda, you got one All of right. the two. I'm impressed. So it's St. Patrick today. And that's why I'm wearing this nice uh, scarf for St. Patrick. Irish scarf. And uh, I was talking about this with Brenda before the, the podcast today. We were discussing about different things we can make with the margarita mix. And one thing that you will notice, that if you put it in the freezer, it's not going to freeze completely to rock ice. It's going to make this type of slushy granite. And this is really interesting. You can use this this way as a garnish. You put it in a Ziploc or in any plastic bag, put it in the freezer. Once in a while at the beginning, just go play with it a little bit to make sure it doesn't get in a, in a big, uh, just one block. Okay, you, you just crush it. And then you'll have this beautiful granite here that you can serve to your guests again in a nice glassware. No way. And yes, it's really, it's super good. It's already balanced. And me, yeah, I made this pandam syrup here. So pandam is a plant from South Asia and in the Chinatown here in Montreal, probably in all Chinatowns uh, across the country, they sell these uh, in a little concentrate. It's super green. It tastes like cake and vanilla. It's really good. And I mixed it, I mixed just a little bit of it because it's super, it's very tasty with the fairly simple syrup. So I have this syrup here and it's green. So you put it like this in your granite. And it's going to bring this uh, cake vanilla flavor that is mixed perfectly with your uh, margarita granite that uh, that we have made. And for St. Patrick, it's a nice touch because it's green and it so has cool. the color of St. Patrick. And it's, uh, yeah, it looks good in a little glass like this. So it's like a in between meal you serve that to guests that are having a big meal that are having different services at one point you arrive with that it's not to be sold really it's just like depending but i think it's more like a little something to give in between meals for some for the restaurant that are serving different uh, services to open up the, the 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 stomach for the next one yeah so there you go and that it's is green, spectacular so. Yeah, so pandemic is, is really interesting. Another thing that I worked on uh, today, and I do it a lot at the bar school when we have fruits that are going bad or fruits that we know we're not going to be using, or also just little piece of fruit that are leftovers when we are using most of it. We are putting these into sugar, okay? So we mix the just uh, raffinated sugar, white sugar. We mix it with, for example, this one are lemon and lime uh, zest. These are the pieces that we don't use when we cut the fruit. We mix it with the sugar and we put it in a mason jar. And then the sugar will go soak up all the liquid and the oil that are still in the fruit. So it's crazy the intensity of flavor and, and the smell you can get from this technique. And then you can use the sugar that has a super strong zesty taste. So with the piece of uh, lemon and lime delicious this one is with uh, argousier so argousier is a little fruit that grow in quebec it's a bitter sweet really different really unique flavor and uh, we use that for a different cocktail here it has so much juice in it compared to the zest you can see it's all liquid and um, it's just very unique it, it's expensive too so if you use the fruits as it as it is, you're not gonna get as much as flavor as if you use it this way. So that's why for us, it's like making a, a very intense, tasty syrup. And I'm gonna use this as a little quantity in my next cocktails. So what I do is just, again, we are in the simplicity. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of the margarita mix, one ounce, which is already balanced with sugar and acidity. And then I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make the one with the argousier okay so i'm gonna put one ounce yep Pio, i have a question for you do you put the do you store those in your fridge or do you just store those on the counter in the fridge yeah okay that's a, you know what you just say you just gave a billion ideas for people controlling their waste control in a restaurant yep you just yeah, save exactly. like millions of dollars dude just across the world instantly <laughs> Seriously, like cannot, it's, it's, amazing. I'm sitting, I mean, it's amazing, dude. Seriously. Wow. So this is only sugar. 
lime juice, lemon juice, and my mix of sugar with uh, argousier or my mix of sugar with any fruits, actually, you can make. So when I say lime, lemon juice, and sugar, it comes from the margarita mix. So I put one ounce of that, and I put one ounce of this mix. That's it. That's it. Balance. That's it. Put, That's it. put ice in it. Give it a little shake in the shaker. You do it in everything you want. You mix it in anything that is filled properly to have all the ingredients together and to add dilution. So you make it cold, you add dilution, and you mix the ingredients together. And when you're done, you take a little coupe, something fancy, something that looks great, and then you double strain it. So you use your two strainers to go get all the juice, all the flavor, and this liquid is really, really sweet, really acid, really flavorful. So you need to balance it out by adding sparkling water. So it's a type of sparkling lemonade slash spritz, non-alcoholic spritz. Could be like this way, depending on how you want to sell it, depending on how you want to brand it. But you can definitely add a lot of sparkling water in this one because it's very, very tasty, the liquid that I have made with the sugar and the margarita mix. Then you have your sparkling water and you have it this way. It has a nice, beautiful foam on it. It wow. looks great. And look at the color. Like this is Argousier. The color is beautiful. It's unique. People would taste it and say, what is that? That's what? so good. Yeah. So this is really, this is the best for today. Yeah, it's super good. I'll, I'll drink it. You need a I'll picture. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm really curious to find out what the flavor of that fruit is, Pio. I've never heard of that one before. Yeah, can you bring one out, Pio. Pio, can you pull one out? I want to. Yeah. I'm with Brenda. I want to see what it looks like. Here, close up. Yeah, once again. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna me so, coming Brenda, have you ever seen? Not yeah, me. Brenda, we're old. We're old. Can you please bring that closer? Look at that. Is it like a way. berry? It looks like the it's things like... you used to get off the trees around. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It looks yeah, it like looks this. like that. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't do with those other ones. That's wicked, isn't it? Look how beautiful. Okay, Pio, one more walk around. Grab that drink and bring it around. I want to see a close-up. Because I it looks like it glows. It's so cool. Yeah. God, you're good. That Look is at that, Brenda. Are you serious? Look how bright that is. <laughs> yeah, don't don't stop drinking it. It's so hot in here. It's so that it's is incredible. so beautiful. Isn't that awesome, Brenda? Yeah, that is really, really spectacular. Slam dunk. Would, you, yeah. would you bother garnishing that PO or would you just let it stand on its own? Well, depending. Garnishes are fun, but it doesn't have to be garnished all the time. It depends right. on what the cost is and if you want. Yeah, garnishes, you could. You could put a little argousier on it. You could put a little piece of lemon, something that complements your drink. This one is the margarita mix. It can be lemon, lime, something that you find in the drink. Or right. you can find something that complements it. So then you do a little bit of research. What fits with argousier? What fits with lime, with lemon? And you can put a garnish that is uh, complementing the drink. You don't, don't put something that has nothing to do with the drink. It right, could be right. not in the drink, but complement it. Or it could be something that you find in the drink. Well, you don't have to put garnish all the time. Margaritas, right. there is a little bit of salt. Dark, daikiri, no garnish. Just daikiri is a, is a simple drink. Rum, lime juice, simple syrup, boom, push it this way. This is always good. And for me, I, I never put garnish on my dark eries. I think it's, it's, it's the perfect cocktail and doesn't need garnishes. So, yeah, if you want, you can be creative. For me, I didn't put garnish on this one because, like, uh, I think it glows. I think it looks beautiful. It it's does. And this is what is nice with it. There you go. I'm, Pio, I'm... can you send us the recipe on that? And we'll put it up with the video on the bottom, please. Because <laughs> I think it's a slam dunk. Thanks, man. Yeah, for sure. We'll send you all the recipes and also the one that every week, every time we do that, we we take we keep all the recipes so we make sure you have it all. It's uh, we call that a winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> hey, Brenda. <laughs> winner winner chicken dinner. We got to come up with a beverage. You got to do a beverage one like that. Yeah. There we go. Well, Pio, that's the slam dunk. That usually is like the closer when you do something like that. I'm blown away. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm thank glad you. you like it. Yeah, it's very good. Welcome. Seriously, I uh, I won't uh, I won't give you any trivia I had up on the screen here, Brenda, about St. Patty's Day. Oof. Maybe we just do one. Sure, if you like. Do you want to do one? Just to just sure. want to do one one one. 
Okay, what Irish liqueur is the most popular in the world? Bailey's. There you go. That's why you're a beverage expert. <laughs> Perfect. Right? That's right. Do you like that? That was almost too quick. Give me another one. Okay, okay. Here's one more. Here's one. What percentage of the United States presidents have Irish ancestries in them? Huh. What percentage of That's a Irish weird question? Yeah. Yeah, which presidents have a little bit of Irish in them? That's just going to be a random guess. I'm going to say uh, 65. 40. Huh. I think it's still high. Well, they it's all, you know, they all, they all came from Ireland over there, right? Yeah. You're watching sure Gangs did. in New York. It's a good movie. Exactly. Uh, so here's the last one. This is a good one, P.L. Are you ready? This is a good one. Yeah. This is the, this is like awesome. Okay. What is still the most tuned in radio station in Ireland? A, U2FM, B, the obituaries broadcast, C, the Catholic hour, or D, the IRA report? Which oh one Lord. is the most tuned in radio station show still in Ireland? U2. Brenda? Just because it's so weird, I'd say the obituary one. <laughs> <laughs> it is still really the most widely listened to radio channel in Ireland. Okay, Irish let's put this on. into context. Who's listening to the radio versus listening to podcasts and listening to streams? Exactly. Streams? Exactly. Right. There's logic there behind go. it. There the number is declining every day as 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 the obituary program is getting longer. Exactly. The exactly. listeners are getting <laughs> They're just dying off. Oh. Okay. oh, that's such a good one, eh, hey, Brenda? Yes. Anyways, it's so hot in here. I have to go. I'm gonna be in my short suit. <laughs> Anyways, PO, it's absolutely always a always a pleasure, blessing to have you on the show and everything else. So thank you so much for what you do. And Brenda. You guys absolutely are one of my favorite vendors, companies out there. Fairly and Lasagna, you guys rock. Thank it's you. not the heat talking. It's me talking. And just thank you for putting this all together. You guys are unbelievable. And thank you for the products. I have almost drank the whole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> trying to stay hydrated here. So, no, so, uh, the cocktail I'll be like, uh, yeah, call me at three in the morning because I'll still be up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyways, thank you. Thank you both. And right. uh, anyways, have a great rest of your day and we'll sign off from here. Happy St. Patty's Day, everyone. Right. Cheers. Take